How you doing guys? This is Eric from RuledWasteland.com. I made a video recently about how I am suspicious that there will be further lockdowns, and if not lockdowns, at least further supply chain issues and uh, just availability issues and all sorts of stuff that will make it a good idea to stockpile goods that you need. Now as preppers, we should have a lot of these things already set aside, if not all of them, but you know, for those of you who may just want to double check, or if you're just starting out, just deciding it's a good idea, absolutely awesome. This is a list of things that I think that you should stockpile for at least 90 days worth. I mean, obviously, you start with even a weekend's worth is great, a week's worth, whatever. I mean, you can get a week's worth of food and things on this list for like 50 bucks. Even a few months' worth for two people is not going to be that expensive. And like I mentioned in the previous video, you're probably going to be saving money simply because you can buy in bulk. You can buy it now when it's cheaper as opposed to in the next year or two when inflation is certainly going to have increased prices. And you don't have to worry about availability. And also you can do other various things like use the bulk purchases to get to credit card uh, bonuses and things like that. There's all sorts of other stuff you can do. But just purchasing the things that you know you're going to need now and storing them is a great idea. And this is the list of things that I think you should get. Starting out with the staples, um, rice, beans, oats, pasta. Those are the simple, simply the cheapest, easiest to store, longest lasting foods that you can buy per dollar or cal excuse me, calories per dollar. They're unbeatable, especially rice. Pasta is also extremely cheap. Beans, obviously, oats. These are all really cheap, last extremely long time when they're packed well in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers in a bucket and no moisture, no oxygen. They'll last for literally decades. And, uh, Pasta, the only, my biggest beef with pasta in terms of storage is it is not that space effective depending on what type of pasta you get. Like, um, I know my girlfriend likes the, the spin, spinning ones. I guess they're like rigatoni or something. I'm not, a, I'm not Italian. I don't know all the pasta. But if, for space-wise, it's all pretty much the same price. But space-wise, if you can get like the macaroni noodles or the shorter ones, even spaghetti noodles, that'll store a lot more densely. So if you have space, not an issue. If you don't have space, I would go with the smaller pasta. But definitely the grains and the pastas store extremely well, and they're extremely cheap per dollar. Rice is my favorite out of those. Next up, you can supplement with canned goods, specifically canned meats. That's my favorite thing to buy that's in a can. Canned meats and canned chili, as I've mentioned in a previous video. Canned chili is one of the highest calorie canned items, and it's also not that expensive. You can get the wolf chili for like $1.88, and it has a pretty good macro split compared to most long-term stored food. It has uh, almost an even split if you get the no bean chili between fats, carbs, and protein, which is extremely hard to get. Like all of the, the grains that I just mentioned are pretty much exclusively carbs. Almost no fat, almost no protein. Protein and fats are the much harder thing to store, so that's why I like to go with canned meats. Canned potatoes also, you can get canned pasta. I prefer to store pasta dry simply because it's a lot uh, lighter and stores more per unit space than the canned pasta and cheaper but you're really just storing a little bit of sauce and a little bit of water in the can. So dry pasta, I suggest. But canned meats are fantastic. Tuna, I love like uh, sardines and canned mackerel. It's like freaking delicious. The ubiquitous spam, of course, canned chicken, canned ham. There's all sorts of canned meats. They will last for years. If a seal isn't breached on a can, you pretty much don't have to worry about expiration date. They've done tests on this stuff. Now, obviously, taste and texture may suffer a little bit if they're extremely old. I've eaten canned goods that are 8 to 10 years old with not really any discernible difference. Maybe I just have a caveman palate, who knows. But when we're talking about survival, and specifically when we're talking about preparing for a few months over the next few years, you know, at some point in the next few years, you don't really have to worry about the storage life too much, especially if you occasionally eat these items. Just eat one, buy a new one do a FIFO first in, first out, so you're eating the oldest one, storing the newest one. And there won't be anything in your pantry if you even eat this stuff occasionally that's more than a few years old. But canned meats are big. Like I said, my favorites are the Spam, the canned mackerel, canned sardines, and tuna, canned ham, canned chicken. I mean, that's pretty good. If you, if you just had a big stack of canned meats, big stack of canned grains and pasta, maybe a little bit of sauce from pasta and whatnot, I mean, that's it. That's really all you need to survive and have a relatively relatively varied, I think, a delicious diet. You know, I eat a lot of rice anyway. I love meat, obviously. I think the canned meats taste fine, especially, like I said, the mackerel and the canned fish, I think is really good. And that's pretty much all you need.
there's a couple other things that I recommend that you can get and that I have, but if that's really all you can do, I mean, with a 200 bucks, you would have a pretty decent stash of food for one, two, three people. Another thing that's good to have is honey or real maple syrup. They store really well, great sugar and energy boost and seasoning more importantly. Obviously, you don't need a lot of sugar, but uh, if you're used to eating a lot of sugar, like most modern Americans are, it can be pretty rough to immediately transfer to a diet with no sugar, which is probably a good idea, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of sugar, and it's specifically if it's real honey and real maple syrup and not corn syrup, um, like they try to adulterate most of the stuff with, those are great to buy. Not cheap, but they do store pretty well as well. Powdered eggs is another great one. Not something that you can really get casually, you know, you have to go to a um, preparedness outlet online, but like Honeywell has the canned eggs. They're relatively inexpensive, comparatively speaking. Obviously, much more expensive than just buying eggs normally, but shelf-stable. You can throw it away in a closet, and it'll last for years. And it's a great, easy thing to cook. They're already basically cooked, so you just have to add water to it, whip it up. Easy to cook. You can do it in the sun oven. You can add it to the rice or whatever. Great addition to stored food. Now, since I'm mostly making this video in respect to what I think is coming in the near future, I think that frozen meat has a place as well. I'm not expecting massive power disruptions, at least in the medium term. So if you have a chest freezer, stocking up on frozen meats is a good idea, I think, because it'll get you around brief supply chain issues. Obviously, you can't store as long term as canned goods. And, uh, you know, it's, if power goes out, you're kind of screwed if you don't have backup generation or anything but at least for the short term just dealing with supply chain issues and cost increases stuffing your freezer with meats I think is a good idea I would avoid stuff like the frozen vegetables and everything because they take up a lot of space they don't really have that much that many calories and uh, if you can't get broccoli or whatever for a few weeks because of a supply chain issue not a big deal much better to have that space taken up with a nutritious and delicious beef and chicken and things like that fish so I definitely have a chest freezer that I stock pretty much exclusively with frozen meats. Another one is the stuff that you just enjoy, you know, if you coffee. It's hard to store coffee long term except for like the raw beans to roast them yourself. But it'll still last quite a long time, especially if you are not too uh, picky about the coffee. Then you can get instant coffee. That can store uh, better than just the coffee beans or coffee grounds. I think the whole beans, regardless, are going to store a little longer than the already ground ones. So if you have a grinder, that's probably the better way to go. But at least get yourself a few months worth so short-term disruptions aren't messing with your... Um, your system, you know, your daily living. And if you're a real coffee, like addicted, you know, coffee addict, need it every day, even if you're pretty picky, I would store away some of the long term stored instant coffee. It's better than nothing if you really just have to have coffee. Along with that is pet food. If you have any pets, make sure you store up a few months worth of food for them. Most of the time, that's pretty easy. The food's either dry or in cans, unless you feed your dog a raw diet or something like that. But, uh, Dry dog food lasts several months, so just a few bags extra. Canned dog food, of course, certainly will last for years. So just make sure you have a little extra. You definitely want to have at least as much as you have food for yourself because if, if that point the dog runs out of food or the cats run out of food before you do, you're either going to have to watch them starve, which you probably won't do. What you would end up doing is end up giving them food out of your you know stored food, which is probably more expensive anyway, so you might as well just store up the pet food. Beyond that is a list of non-food items. I mean, if you get everything on that list that I just mentioned and then just bolster with whatever minor little things that you enjoy and last well, then you'll be set food-wise. Just make sure you also have a way to cook it, even if there's disruptions in power and supply chains. So for me, my, my uh, sun oven, link will be in the description, fantastic way to cook pretty much anything. Out here, you can use it year-round, probably 300, 330 days a year. It can use to be cooked the meals. That's my main plan. I also have a propane grill and some propane camping stoves with multiple cans of proteins, or protein, multiple cans of propane and propane accessories set aside. So that is like my two-stage plan if the gas and electricity goes out of the house. So we do still have gas here. Gas tends to run sometimes even when electricity isn't. So you might be able to use your gas stove even if the power's out sometimes. It depends on uh, how it's supplied. And uh, if you have a off-grid gas at your place, that's even better, like an actual gas tank that has to get refilled. So make sure that's topped off. Maybe get some extra small ones. I have small propane cans for lanterns and can be used as stoves as well. 
but the sun oven is a big part of that. And last ditch effort, I of course have little different types of camping stoves and wood stoves. You can even use cardboard, you know, little rocket stoves that can just trash and bust up furniture. So I have multiple ways to cook that. Make sure you do as well. I love the sun oven. They're not cheap, but you can get, I think, 50 bucks off at the link in the description. And if you're anywhere in the South United States, you know, all the way across, it's just a fantastic prepping tool. I can't say enough good about the sun ovens in terms of how useful they would be in a disaster scenario. And, uh, but for non-food related items, make sure you have everything you need on a daily basis. The best way to do this would be to take a week, write down everything you use. Just if you use something, write it down. If you pick something up, write it down. And then at the end of the week, you'll be able to see all the things that are consumable that might run out. So, um, if you don't use something at least weekly, it's probably not that important. If you want to go a whole month and do this exercise, you can do that. I wouldn't wait a month to start buying some of these things, but you know, do it for a month. And after the first week, you'll realize that these things are going to all be the same. So you obviously need your toothpaste, you need your toilet paper, you need your tissue paper, any wipes, you need shampoo, body wash, deodorant, any sort of shaving creams, any sort of like product. Like I said, I'm not necessarily having you prepare for an apocalypse here and preparing, preparing for price increases, supply chain shortages, lockdowns in the short term. So even stuff like hair gel, stuff like that, anything that you would have to go to the store for that's imported, which is pretty much everything in the U.S. that might go up in price, the stores will, go ahead and get it now. Any of your supplements, vitamins, minerals, any sort of medicines, if you can, it's great to stockpile those. Like I said, razor, shaving cream, pretty much any product that you use, just look as you go through your daily routine. Q-tips, whatever. Most of the stuff is really cheap and stores really well. And uh, there's no reason not to get three to six months of it right now when you know it's going to probably be harder to find and certainly more expensive in the next six months to two or three years. Also, make sure you go into your household supplies, not just your personal toiletries. Paper towels, laundry detergent, any dryer sheets or anything like that. You use paper plates. Uh, disposable silverware, stuff like that. I think those are fantastic for disaster scenarios, especially in areas where water is not plentiful, because you can just throw dishes away or burn them for fuel later instead of having to use water and other supplies and soap to clean dishes. So obviously you'd still have your pots and pans and whatnot, but I like using disposable things in a disaster scenario, at least in a short-term one, because it cuts down on some of the other supplies you would have to use. And if possible, look into thing fuel gasoline, stuff like that. I already mentioned propane, but gasoline is a big one if you have a way to store it. Even a couple extra five-gallon cans. I'll have a link in the description. Make sure you get the good ones. I've tried the cheaper ones before, and just like everyone always says, they end up busting open on you. The seams split and leak. you got to get the good ones. I'm still on the lookout for some of those plastic scepter ones, the Canadian ones. Those are fantastic, but there are decent, uh, I think the Wavian ones are the ones I have now. They're expensive for the jerry cans, but uh, they're what you got to get. And just having one or two of those set aside makes a big difference, especially in um, modern cars that get really good gas mileage most of the time. An extra 10 gallons if you have two cans, that is um, going to get you several states usually. You know, if you have 10 gallons of gas, a lot of cars will get you 250, 300 miles, you know, of highway driving. And even if it's just city driving, then it can last you a few weeks at least, bypass it if there's a jam up at the pump or whatever. Um, if you have a generator, obviously you want to store some gas for that. So just make sure you're storing it safely in a place that's not going to blow up or get way too hot or be dangerous in the house. Same goes with the propane. And then obviously beyond that, make sure you got your defense squared away. Ammunition, at least a couple firearms, at least one or two for every person in the house so they can be armed. And if you expect anyone to show up at your place in any sort of civil unrest, Make sure they have something you can arm them with. Of course, you've, you've seen my videos before. I recommend having body armor or at least a plate carrier. I prefer full coverage body armor because I think a lot of what you would face in a scenario like that would be 9mm would be handgun rounds. It would just be exclusively rifle rounds. So the full coverage that stops, you know, stabs, and this is safe life fence. I'll put, I'll put the uh, link in the description to that as well. But, yeah, military guys, sometimes the spec op guys will use exclusively play carriers because they know they're having to travel long distances you know on foot sometimes and they know they're exclusively facing rifle fire so the uh you know the extra weight to have the coverage for handgun protection might not make as much sense for them but if you're not in a green beret or something you're talking about being in your house against a mob of people i like the full coverage and then adding the rifle plate it's going to be a little bit heavier but like i said you're not rucking across 
desert. And if you are, you have the option to take out the soft panels and use the vest like a play carrier. So that's my opinion on it. But just make sure you have something. Make sure you have a little bit of stored water. Make sure you have a way to purify water. I have videos before on calcium hypochlorite. You can have Berkey filters. You can have plain household bleach. The sun oven itself that I already mentioned is a great way to pasteurize water. It like sterilize water without quite boiling it. It gets it up to like 180 plus degrees. Keeps it there for long enough to sterilize it. So that is even fantastic. And another great reason to have a sun oven. And just make sure you have at least several gallons of water per person per day for a couple weeks. If you, have, if you live in somewhere where water is extremely plentiful, that's useful. Just make sure you do have a way to purify it. And that's pretty much everything. That is basically preparedness in a nutshell. I mean, you can get into all the nitty-gritty specifics, and that's what this whole channel is about. Watch all the videos. But basically, basic preparedness, especially for the next couple months, this is the list of things that you need. Let me know what you guys think. If you have all these squared away, then awesome, good for you. Talk to you later.